God has promised us so many blessings, and what he's asked us to do is to love and obey him. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. I think that's John 14, 15. He did not say, if you obey me, I will love you. See, we read it wrong. We're not buying God's love through our obedience. We're not buying special favors with our obedience. We love God first. And the more you love God, the more you're going to obey him. So if you're having a problem with obedience, why don't you just go study more about how much God loves you and fall deeper and deeper and deeper in love with God. And the more you love him, the more you're going to have to do what's right because you just can't stand not to. Amen. Instead of trying in the flesh to do things right, just spend more time with God. Noah had a covenant with God. The, um, the earth had been flooded. And when the flood subsided, God made a covenant with Noah. And there were things that he asked Noah to do, and they all were dietary laws, which wouldn't make any sense to us. And he said, I will put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of this covenant. And we still get to see that, that rainbow, okay? But there are different strokes for different folks, as they say. And Abraham comes along and God makes a covenant with him. And the first thing he says to Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Now, why did he have to get away from his family? Because they were all idol worshipers. And I want to tell you, sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is get away from something. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is get away from something. And so, and he told Abram, if you'll do this, I will make of you a great nation, number one. Number two, I will bless you. Number three, I will make your name great. Number four, and you will be a blessing. And number five, I will bless those who bless you. <laughs> and whoever curses you, I will curse. I love every bit of that. Man. All he had to do was walk away from some wrong stuff. And God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name famous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're going to be so blessed that you're going to be a blessing to everybody you get around. And everybody who blesses you, I'm going to bless them because they bless you. Wow. That's pretty good stuff. And then he said, we're going to make a covenant. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all those things I just read to you. And he said... For you, I want you to obey my precepts and as a sign of this covenant, every male has to be circumcised. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have a rainbow than a circumcision. <laughs> How many of you could use a rainbow right now? Well, I'm sorry, that may not be the way it goes. And the circumcision is really just cutting away of flesh. And it was a, a way of showing under the new covenant that God wanted us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Thank God we don't have to do what he had to do, although most male babies are circumcised because it's healthy. But the, the, the circumcision that we have is a circumcision of the heart. Where we're walking in the spirit, 
not in the flesh. But I just, I thought that was pretty good, you know, that not everybody gets the same thing. God saved us by his grace and gave us the Holy Spirit to help us walk in obedience to him. We don't even have to try to do it by ourselves. He gives us all the help that we need. We're not perfect in our performance, but we can have a perfect heart toward God. And that's what God's looking for. The eyes of God roam to and fro across the earth, looking for someone whose heart is perfect toward him, in whom he might show himself strong. And so a person with a perfect heart, just you want to do everything that God wants you to do so bad, you can just hardly stand it. And that desire to please God causes you to study, it causes you to pray, it causes you to want to do everything that the Word tells you to do. And you don't read the Bible out of obligation and you don't spend time with God out of obligation and you don't give out of obligation. You do those things because you love God. I remember, I remember my brother saying to me one time, many, many, many years ago, he said, why do, you, why do you give all that money to the church? And I looked at him and I said, I'm not giving it to the church, I'm giving it to God. It never one time occurred to me that I was giving it to the church or a person. I always knew I was giving it to God in obedience to him. And we need, you need to realize that when you give, you're not giving your money to a, a man or a woman or a, a person or a building. You, God's putting it through their hands but you're giving it to God. And I might even go so far as to say, if the person that you give it through misuses it, that still won't keep you from being blessed if you have in mind that you're giving it to God. So we're not perfect in our performance, but we can have a perfect heart toward God. And the Holy Spirit, through the Word, will help us be transformed into God's image from glory to glory to glory. We have been predestined to be transformed into the image of Christ. Can I say something? You may be the only Jesus your neighbor will ever see. Now, I am just in a pitiful shape here because I'm down to 11 minutes and I haven't even started my message. <laughs> so, I have an eight-point message. <laughs> and here's number one. I do this all the time. It's pathetic. So I'm just going to tell you some of the blessings that are yours and Tell, the, tell you that you need to start just pressing in a little bit and letting the devil know that you're not going to do without them. Amen? First thing that God has given us is the forgiveness of our sins. Now, that is so amazingly wonderful. It, it just gets me so excited when I think that he not only forgives our sins, but he forgets them. <laughs> forgets them and, and moves them as far as the east is from the west, which nobody can figure that out. But he forgets them. And I, I just saw in Isaiah 43, 25, I've read that hundreds of times, but I never saw this. It says, I, even I, am he who blots out and cancels your transgressions for my own sake. He doesn't even do it for us, he does it for himself. I might have to think on that some more, but you know, it thrilled me because I've been teaching people for years now, you don't forgive other people for them, do yourself a favor and forgive. And then I run across this and he says, for my own sake. God doesn't want anything between us. He doesn't want anything between you and him. He wants it to be good and clear and pure, and he wants you to be comfortable. And 
And there's so many scriptures in the Bible that talk about the forgiveness of God. But you know, one of the things I think that we make a mistake about is I don't think we know how to receive. I think we read some of this stuff and we just don't know how to receive. So I want you just to take 30 seconds and I want you to close your eyes and sit real quietly and inside in your heart, I want you just to think over and over, all of my sins are forgiven. Go. Okay, we'll say that's 30 seconds. Now, this is just a little trick I'm teaching you today. I think if you use this at home, it'll really be a blessing to you. Because I do think that we, we got this stuff in our head, but we don't take time to just sit in the presence of God and receive it. How many of you think I might be right? Maybe, I don't know. Okay, now, the second thing that I was gonna to talk to you about today was that God promises to be with us always. Can, can you just think about how amazing that is? That God lives inside of you? God lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Jesus lives in you. You're the house of God. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Everywhere you go, I'll go. I won't leave you until I have done everything that I told you that I would do. My goodness.